Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode three of Careers in Aviation, brought to you by Adorn Before Flight. I'm your host, Bernard Green. Careers in Aviation is a video series dedicated to introducing today's youth to tomorrow's aviation employment opportunities. In the first part of our series, we want to introduce you to various aviation professionals. And if you stick along in the latter parts of our series, we want to give you the opportunity to see how you could follow along in their footsteps. So where am I today? Well, this is the brand new Charlotte Douglas International Airport's FAA Air Traffic Control Tower. You can actually see the old tower behind my shoulder, just beyond the terminal there. This terminal, or this tower, is scheduled to come online probably in the latter parts of 2021. So I have a question for you guys. Do you know any air traffic controllers? Do you know anyone who gets to give permission to airplanes, big and small, to be able to take off, to be able to land, or how to go from one point on an airport to another? Well, if you don't, but you would like to meet someone like that or know someone like that, today's your lucky day because we're traveling to Memphis International Airport's air traffic control tower there, where we'll meet someone who does just that. So if you're ready to go, get ready to listen closely. So are you ready? Good, let's go meet an air traffic controller. Good afternoon, Ashley Wimbush, how are you doing today? I'm great, how are you? I'm doing wonderful, I'm doing great. Well, it's great to see you. It's been a long time since uh, last time we got to, to chat or see each other in person. So it's really good to see you. Right, right. Good to see you as well in a beautiful Charlotte background. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So that's another thing too. So yeah, we, um, we wanted to um, be someplace that was applicable to our guests um, this afternoon. And, um, you know, um, so before we get too far into it, I want to formally introduce you or, or allow you to introduce yourself. Um, yeah, so what is it? Who, who are you and what do you do? So uh, thank you for having me, uh, Bernard. And uh, my name, for those that, that do not know me, my name is Ashley Wimbush, um, also known as DJ Alpha Whiskey. I am an air traffic controller here in Memphis, Tennessee and Memphis Tower. Um, I've been an air traffic controller uh, Memphis Tower now for about seven years, I believe. I've been in the agency overall about eight years in the uh, FAA, uh, Federal Aviation Administration. Um, and uh, my first facility was Jackson, Mississippi. I'm a CTI graduate, um, which means the, uh, the Collegiate Training Initiative uh, or College Training Initiative uh, grad from uh, Hampton University. Um, so uh, Hampton University, HBCU, um, located in Hampton, Virginia. And so, yeah, um, I also mentioned DJ Alpha Whiskey because um, I'm also a DJ on the side as well. So I just kind of figured out how to combine aviation and music together, so. Wonderful, and then just for our viewers too, so what, what's, your, uh, what's your DJ name? So my DJ name, Alpha Whiskey. Okay. And uh, my name uh, is, of course, the phonetic, how I got my name, the phonetic alphabet. So we talk to pilots, we have to use Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, so forth. So Alpha, Ashley, Whiskey, Wimbush, so Alpha Whiskey. And it's just kind of like, you know, cool name. So yeah, and, and also, you know, just kind of piggyback off that, you know, I consider myself an alpha female <laughs> and to do this type of job, they say air traffic controllers have type A personalities. Mm. So, you know, it's just kind of like the whole thing into the name and into it. So um, whiskey means water for life um and water of life and so uh when you dance and listen to the music i consider me giving you life you know so it just kind of all, <laughs> all goes yeah, together yeah. 
<laughs> that's a, yeah, that's 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 a really cool analogy too because I guess you do that on a on a daily basis um, at work and on your second <laughs> career. So in the airwaves, uh, no yeah, point intended. Yes, I tell people I control the airways and the airways. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. So, so then, Ashley, uh, how did you? How, what made you interested in becoming an air traffic controller? How did you? How did? What? What was the process, or that 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 went from? Um, I don't know what I want to do to. I want to be an air traffic controller. Okay, so to make a long story short, but a very interesting story. Um, when I first uh, decided to go to Hampton University, I thought I wanted to be a computer science uh, major. Um, I thought I wanted to, you know, program and, and get in something with computers, but um, that just was not for me. And um, I, when I first got to Hampton, I met a guy, his name was uh, Alvin, Alvin Wilkins. I'm gonna give him a shout out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's still cool now. Um, but uh, I met a guy, Alvin Wilkins, and he, he knew when he was a kid, he wanted to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. And he was in the ROTC program there in Hampton. And he was like, hey, um, you want to go flying with me sometime? And I was like, flying? You know, no, I'm not going to go flying with you. You know, you no, we can ride in the car, <laughs> but not fly. And so over time, you know, he would go out to the um, uh, Chesapeake. In Chesapeake, Virginia, they had a, a flight school out there. And he would, he would go and he would ask me to go with him sometimes. And I saw he took it very seriously. And so one day he, he asked me again and um, I told him, yes. I said, if the flight instructor is with us, I will go up there with you. So I did, and he did, you know, really well, um, you know, to a point to where I, I started flying with him on a regular basis. And um, like I said, he was very passionate about it because he knew he wanted to be a pilot in the military. Mm, okay. and, and so um, he studied all the time and a way for him to study, um, he would go through his book and then say all the stuff. And I had to take the book and make sure, you know, he was saying, you know, getting all the answers and stuff right. So in that process, I'm like, this is pretty cool. You know, I think I could do this and so like i said computer science just was not working out and he said at one day he said it was my sophomore freshman year my sophomore year he said actually you know maybe you should think about aviation and i was like well i don't know what i would i don't know if i want to be a pilot and um so um he says well you can talk to the aviation chairperson and they can, you know, kind of guide you from there. And I said, okay. So I did. And we talked about um, aviation management. Um, and so from there, I said, well, I can take aviation classes and business classes. This would be pretty cool. And I switched my major and that was the best decision I made. Um, from that, I applied for an internship with the FAA that, that same semester and I got selected. They said, Miss Wimbush, would you like to go to Wichita, Kansas for three months? We'll pay. We'll pay you and pay for everything. Yes. So I went out there. You know, I met some great people, did some networking. Then the next year, I got another internship, and it was um, in Washington, D.C. Hmm. And I got to meet some really cool people. And from that, I got to, and that led me to another opportunity to be an intern and the air traffic control tower at Washington National, AKA DCA. Wow, okay. And when I saw how the air traffic control, cause I had no, still, I wasn't thinking about air traffic. But when I saw how the controllers were doing in my first experience in the tower, there was an accident on the runway. A plane came in and the wind took it and flipped over. Cause it was like a steerman. It was a steerman. Oh, wow. And so I saw how they handled everything and, and, and nothing was the same every day. And so I said, this is pretty cool. I think I could do this. I yeah. went back to school the next semester and, and picked up uh, air traffic control classes, graduated and took the test and became an air traffic controller in the rest of the year. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's, that's a really interesting story. It's, it's cool too. So you went from being exposed by a friend of yours in in in, in the flying realm 
and to to changing your major to getting these internships just and and what was the time span on on this is this, so a, this is, yeah this was around uh 2007 8 okay and and, and that took each semester, each uh, summer, I did an internship. Okay. So 2008 to about 2010, every, for two years, I did an internship. The third year, once I graduated, I did another one once I graduated, but then that led to a permanent job for a contractor for the FAA. Oh, I see. So, okay. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of networking, a lot of just, you know, staying focused and, and, doing what I needed to do. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And then so so today um, you mentioned how that uh, steerman kind of landed and the wind kind of you know blew it over a little bit and those air traffic controllers handled it you know very coolly and calmly and collectively and uh, how would you describe what you do today? Uh, I mean I imagine at Memphis Tower you don't see too many steermans. But uh, <laughs> if any at all, you're really, really, really lucky to see a steering. But uh, but I but obviously um, some of our viewers might may or may not know that Memphis has a lot of FedEx traffic, so a lot of heavy metal, heavy jets that are going in and out. What is it that you do um, on a daily basis that may be a little bit different? Can you describe that a little bit for our viewers how your how your job is today? Yeah, so um, like I said, nothing is the same every day. And when I say day, I mean night too, because okay. I um, work the midnight shift uh, um, yeah. at, at the tower. So just for people to understand, air traffic controllers, we work, we have to work shift work. Some of us, you know, we work the morning shifts. Some of us work midday shifts. Some of us work night shifts. It all just depends on what's needed, what's your schedule, your seniority, all of that. So I've got a pretty good seniority now. So um, I like to have the weekends off to where I can DJ and stuff. So I work the, the best schedule for me is the night shift. And so with that at night, I come in at 10 o'clock every 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. But we it's a kind of routine for the night shift because we know FedEx is going to come in every night around 1030. We know that we're probably going to have all of them in by around 1230, 1 o'clock. They got to sort then um, around 3 30 4 o'clock well lately 4 4 30 they start going back out and we hope to have them all out probably about 5 36 it just depends but what makes my job so interesting is when i say nothing is the same it's because of the weather I see. Weather, weather will make my job easy <laughs> weather will make my job hard hmm. um you know when there's thunderstorms rain uh, snow, anything that can affect um, these airplanes in the sky, that's where, that's where the thinking and all the stuff starts coming in. Um, you know, sometimes we have rules that and, and stuff that changes, you know, something may be going on in the airport. Like right now we have uh, airport reconstruction going on at the concourse, um, yeah, FedEx, they are, they're doing renovations. So um, they might have an entry spot or something that's closed and we gotta figure out a way around that. You might come in in a taxiway that we mainly use is closed or even, you know, sometimes debris or something might happen randomly one night. And now we are like, well, we got to, or emergency. We, we FedEx, they have emergency sometimes, you know, that could happen. Um, a lot of people don't know about this laser illumination. Sometimes somebody might be somewhere, got some lights and child laser. Now that's a whole different thing. So all these different things happen and can affect, uh, my night, but my my mindset when I go in is, all right, Ashley, you gotta get these planes in. We gotta get these planes out, you know. And so it's six of us, and we all work together as a team as best as we can, you know. 
and it's been kind of challenging with COVID, but we're making it, you know, so yeah, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> yeah, that, that does, that does. And I was just, I think what I would ask is also too for our viewers, if you could maybe add a little more detail to your uh, level of responsibility. So for example, you work in the tower, but some people have this misconception that I, that I sometimes may talk to, or you probably do as well, where they may have this misconception that you are in the tower are talking to people who are maybe still maybe 100 miles away from the airport. Okay, yeah, 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 okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, if you could just bring it down to a- um, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, as I stated before, I work in the tower and I am responsible for um, any aircraft or helicopter or now or drone maybe <laughs> that's, yeah. that's within seven miles of, of Memphis airspace of the airport. So uh, for me, basically anything that's um, any ground movement I'm responsible for, we call that position ground control. Um, if you're a passenger, we're getting, we're talking to the pilot and they're pulling, pushing, we're giving them their clearances, um, letting them know their route that they're going, um, wherever you're going, if you're going to Las Vegas, you know, we're making sure that the pilot has the right route, the right altitude, the right um, squawk number that lets us know what, uh, airplane is what and the call sign so we can identify and know who is who when we're looking at the radar scope. Um, uh, we also uh, make sure, you know, um, like I said, ground movement, vehicles, anything, any aircraft or anything that's moving around on the airport, we're patrolling all of that, making sure we don't have any type of nose to nose because you don't want this to happen. Yeah. Um, also local control. Local control, like I said, is clearing planes for takeoff and clearing planes to land. Okay. Um, anything, once we clear a plane for takeoff, uh, for example, we'll say FedEx 125, our nav ribs clear for takeoff. Plane, he takes off, he'll read it back to us. We have to make sure what they say matches what we said. Hear, hear, hear backs, read backs are very important because if a pilot says something wrong and does the wrong thing, that can cause you know, uh, any type of accident or incident. So um, once they take off, we tell them, they we see the tag pop up. They're about, you know, a thousand feet high off the ground. Everything looks okay. Switch them to departure, which is the radar controller downstairs in the basement. Okay. And, and then that's it. I'm done with them. Um, okay. We have helicopters. A lot of people don't know uh, that we control the helicopters that are in, within the airspace as well. Um, air ambulance helicopters. So if someone gets in a car accident or somewhere like down in Mississippi or anywhere and they got to get transport, uh, transported up to uh, Baptist or Methodist or any hospital, we have a, a list of hospitals that we, oh, wow. um, that we know of and we can pull it up and we're like, okay, all right, a, a helicopter Air One will call me. He's all the way down in um, somewhere in south part of Mississippi, southeastern Mississippi, and he needs to come to the med, which is in the north. So I got to get him and work him through. Well, they're priority. So if we got any type of FedEx or passenger American, and we got to get that that helicopter through, we got to make sure we, you know, he gets first priority. So if you got to go around or we got to break you out or whatever we got to do, climb you, that's, that's first priority. Um, uh, police helicopters as well. We handle all of those if it's a situation. Um, the news helicopters mm -hmm. and uh, just pho photography. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also people who do pipeline checks okay. and that was kind of interesting to me because I never I was like pipeline checks so once a week during the daytime these uh, planes will come in and they'll just fly around and make sure that the lines and stuff throughout the city are okay and I'm like okay so and that's, that's very t challenging because you got all these FedEx planes coming in at the same time and you got to be able to work this uh, Cessna in and out at a low level with mm -hmm. all of this going wow. on. Wow. So you really have to think and you got to know the rules and make sure you know that you don't have a bad situation, you know. 
Wow. So, that's, so that's that's kind of like, yeah, and that's in the gist of what my job uh, entails, um, you know, communicating with, we deal with all the planes that are on uh, the, the airport, but at night it's mainly um, FedEx. So the, the radar downstairs, I mentioned before, the TRACON, they're responsible for planes. Once we ship them, they, they take them, they climb them up to about 16,000, and then they ship them to the center, which is a bigger facility, and they have over 300 controllers in there, and uh, they're responsible for all the overflights. So once you're flying at 16,000 feet and above, you're talking to a center controller. I see. So if someone was flying from like uh, Washington, D.C. to uh, Dallas, Texas, and they fly over Memphis, you're never going to talk to those people. We would never talk to them. They would probably talk to about uh, 15 to 20 different controllers. The pilot could, and they got something out there about this, but they would talk about how a pilot could talk to 15 to 20 to 30 or so different controllers just from the time he takes off mm -hmm. to the it's flying, excuse me, to, and, and ship to different airspace because you got to go from Washington Center. If you're going across, then you might go talk to Atlanta Center. You, then you're going to talk to Memphis Center. And then you're going to talk to Houston Center. And they're going to take you right on in to Texas. And so it goes by centers. So in that area. So like I said, Washington, um, Atlanta, Memphis, Houston, Albuquerque. There's so many centers, you know, and right. they get paid the big bucks. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh. But they got to know a lot of airspace. They got to draw maps and know a lot of different stuff. Yeah. I see. I see. And that was just when we were, when I was going to say, it sounds like your job can be really stressful uh, to try to make sure those planes are getting the instructions that they need or they're, they're on the ground. I can, I can ima only imagine uh, sometimes there's the risk of an airplane uh, go entering a wrong runway or, or maybe even a smaller plane that's not as knowledgeable of the, of, the, of the layout entering a wrong runway or something like that. Trying to take off from a taxiway. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to take off from a taxiway. Yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. And, and just when I was gonna ask, you know, I know you usually work at night, but just when I was gonna ask, did air traffic controllers ever wear sunglasses or do they get to wear sunglasses? You can, well, there was one guy, he had glasses that would change, but we have a sh two shades that we can pull down. Oh, yeah, okay. You know? Now, um, sometimes I don't feel like the shade is, you know, a good enough shade because I, I work, well, Mondays I work morning sometimes and okay. it's a big difference. I'm like, oh my God, it's <laughs> light out here. But at night I'm so used to just, um, you know, just not seeing all that light and I can see planes a lot clearer, you know, so much easier for me. Yeah. Know? Well, yeah. speaking of that, how many different people do you work with? I know you mentioned uh, six people in your, in the tower, I guess, at one given time where you guys are doing that, that those pushes, I guess, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how diverse is your, is your team of people? Are they, um, yeah. Well, okay. So, um, we have six people, six to seven people that work on the meet, and um, out of about 25 of us in total, I am the only uh, black female, and I'm the oh. only black that works the mid shift. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Uh, in total, um, it's about, let's see, one, two, three of us now. Wow. Um, in the tower, uh, downstairs, it might be a little more, um, but uh, we just had one guy, he just uh, got um, transferred downstairs actually. So, you know, it's kind of, it's, we're very limited when it comes to, you know, the minority side. Um, uh, definitely more male, white male dominated. Um, I think in total, it may be about six, seven, eight females uh, in total. 
Um, so two black females and uh, the rest uh, white, but you know, we're trying to trying to change some things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. we're really happy that you um, agreed to be. You're essentially our first uh, female um, you know, black guest on the show uh, here today, and we're uh, happy to to have you for that. Um, so, um, why do you think that there aren't as many uh, minorities or as much? Uh, variance in the in your in your work in your team it, it, was there was there some more i imagine when at hampton when you were there uh there were obviously a lot more people there who were interested in aviation maybe even air traffic control uh but those people are not or there was there just wasn't as many of them i guess so. no there in my class there was it was a lot of us, um, but when it comes to, you know, just, I don't, the tower, we did have several, a lot of people kind of left and, you know, went away, but um, I, I just, I don't know the, the process anymore. It's changed as yeah. the way they were getting more people, um, especially more minorities, because they were trying to change the process around. But now with COVID and, and everything, things are just kind of like all out of whack. You know, um, I do uh, hope and wish that there was a way that, you know, we could have more you know, uh, more minorities and stuff like that in the field, but a lot of us just don't know about it, you know, and that's the, that's the downfall, you know, growing up, we just didn't have access to some of the stuff. And then once you get older, they find out about it. And sometimes it's too late because I know so many people and I want to let people know this too because it's a major thing about an air traffic controller. A lot of people, they'll find out about, you know, what I do and they're like, man, I want to be an air traffic controller. And they'll be 35 mm -hmm. or 32 or 31 or 30. And I'm like, you got to be in before you're 31. Mm -hmm. okay. And a lot of people don't know that you have to be in the agency selected and everything before 31 because you got a, the whole 25 years and because we retire when we're 55, 56 in that in that time frame. We I have see. mandatory retirement. So so I guess if there is anything that you're gonna that you'd like to share with our younger viewers in particular, I guess that one that would be probably one of the first things that you yeah, let, let people know you if you want to be air traffic controller. You need to get in before a certain time um, and, you know, uh, put that paperwork in or do whatever you need to do. Now, before to be an air traffic controller, you had to either be in the military or you had to have gone to a school and, um, you know, taking classes. And then every so often they would do what they call off the street which is considered general public hire. Okay. And that's any and everybody, no experience, just applying and just seeing how far you get. <laughs> and if oh, you wow. make it, then you got it. And it's a few people who I work with who are general hire, you know, they didn't go to school or anything because you can, I will say you can learn this job, just on the job training. If you get, if somebody can work just like with anything, if somebody can work with you and train you and teach you something, then eventually you'll get it. Now, some people don't, but some people do. Sure. Um, and so for that, you know, um, it's just, it's just all in, in, you know, how hard you work and, and stuff like that. So, um, where, where would you tell, where would, what would be your advice for someone who was graduating high school who knew that, that that's what they wanted to do? For someone graduating high school, my advice right now would be find a two year, if, if, if air traffic is just, that's just it. <laughs> yeah. Find a two year program. 
I think Hampton actually got this, but they also have like, um, I know in Baltimore, Maryland, they had a school called Kingsville. It was like CCBC. And they were getting, I mean, they had a lot of students that were just going there for a two year program. And then they would graduate and then get all this, what they needed and be able to go to the academy, get hired. And they didn't have all that debt and all that other stuff, you know. What's, as to, what's the academy? I'm sorry, what's the academy? academy uh, out in Oklahoma. So every air traffic controller um, has to go to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And they have the Mike Marooney uh, air, ca uh, air traffic academy out there. And when you're selected, you go stay out there for three to five months, depending on whether you're going to be a, a terminal or in, in route, in route being the center, terminal being a tower radar. And um, that's where they make the decision, determination before you go to any airport. If you can pass out there, they give you two, they give you two chances. You have to take a local and a ground. Um, test at the end so you you study you learn for weeks and then at the end they test you they give you what they call eval and then if you pass it you're on to your first facility and then the on the job training the actual live training part. okay so then if I so what if I was in junior high school or if I was in high school even and I wanted to learn more about what it could be. So maybe if I was on the fence, like I, like I'm, I'm listening to, to, to you describe all these things. I'm saying, hmm, this looks like it could be a really cool career, but yeah. I'm not a hundred percent sure if I want to do it or not. Um, right. Do you have any thoughts on something that I could do or someplace I could go uh, to, to learn more perhaps maybe? Yes, I do. Um, I would say you know, Google is always, you know, absolutely. Google. But if you know that's something you want to do, you can always, like I said, try to reach. Well, here in Memphis, I know, and a lot of people don't notice it's it's always in resource because I know the general time has changed, you know, <laughs> and I know a lot of people, you know, they get on the internet and they they Google and they look up stuff, you know, if they want to learn. But I would say if you got to get on a computer and Google, you know, um, flight academies or aviation stuff in the area. Here in Memphis, there, a lot of people don't know this, but there is in Olive Branch, Mississippi, which is like literally right down the street, um, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes across the line, um, is Luke, the Colonel Luke Weathers uh, Flight Academy. Yeah. And there um, you can go and learn how to fly. It's black owned, it's named after, you know, Colonel Luke Weathers, who was an air traffic, he was the first black air traffic controller here in Memphis, Tennessee, former Tuskegee Airmen pilot, all that came back, wanted to fly, but couldn't because he had color of his skin, unfortunately. And he became an air traffic, excuse me, air traffic controller. Um, so for that, they wanted to keep his legacy going. And now they have a flight academy. Now with that, you learn to fly, but you can also learn other aviation things too. Just networking, talking, just trying to get your interests out there because within the aviation community, somebody's going to know an uh, air traffic controller perhaps or a pilot or a mechanic or something to kind of just get you going in the right direction. Um, so I know in the future there are plans at Southwest um, college here in, in Memphis to get a aviation program going where they can teach kids uh, air traffic and, and um, all of that. And I know that's in the works for sure right now. Um, but for someone that's not located here in Memphis um, locally, I would definitely say Google aviation related things or organizations or something or flight schools in the area just to kind of get up because uh, we all work together so yeah. you know if that's what you want to do you're gonna you're gonna find a way <laughs> yes yes yeah. yes um, yeah and thanks for for sharing that to help just to help yeah, I, think make the best, yeah, I think that's the best way for these new kids because 
They be on that phone on the internet. So well, yes, yeah. You know, on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And, and, I, and I hope to try in the future to try to make it more, you know, we want to make it more accommodating for you to be able to to figure out like how, especially minorities, how to figure out to get into these these career fields because it's, it's really cool, you know. And, um, you know, as t- t- time and technology advances, these drones, they're going to take over. Yeah. Ready yeah. first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 Learning how to fly drones is 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 definitely needed. People, photography. Um, I know when I, I actually I just visited Luke Weathers Flight Academy last Friday. I was very impressed, very amazed. They got a lot, a lot of um, equipment down there for training, and they say if you accelerate, it could take you six weeks. You know, it just depends mm-hmm. on you. But you know. Um, they had pictures on the wall of a girl who was a drone pilot for Google. And I'm like, I, I could only imagine. That's pretty cool. You know, yeah, a company's yeah. paying me to just fly a drone, you know, military flying drones, you know, to concerts and stuff. They're going to need people to fly drones. It's a very lucrative field. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So with that, I don't hear a uh, uh, drone pilot as a as a possible another alternative if, that you would have ever considered, I guess, if you hadn't I, gone down. I thought drone. about that, but you know, it's very good to know. It yeah, would right. Be a good thing, you know, to do on the side. You know, somebody. Right. Needs, you can. Since I've been in Memphis here now, I've learned you can not just. It's you can have multiple things you're doing. You know, you can right. be an air traffic controller with a drone pilot degree, a pilot's license, DJ, and all of <laughs> all at the same time, a chef. You can do it all, you know, if you can if you can figure out how to how to learn and and grow and just take the, the necessary steps, you can do it all. So why not sky's the limit? Right, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with that too, um I, so is there anything else that you'd like to share about your DJ inside since, you know, I, you know, you talked about doing other things at the same time, you know, we understand you're a DJ and we love your, your shirt there, Flight Risk. So uh, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more about that? And that? Yes. So, okay. As I said it before, I DJ, I've been DJing now professionally for, for about three years. Um, you know, I talked about, you know, doing the computer science thing, but my passion has always really been music. Mm-hmm. You know, I was in the band um, okay. growing up. I played the clarinet. Okay. Um, and then I saw the movie Drumline mm-hmm. back in the day. And yeah. I got inspired from that one female, because I told you guys I'm like an alpha, me- an alpha female. And I yeah, saw yeah. it and I was like, oh, she, she, she out here killing it. Like, I can get on the drum line. I could do that. You know, I, I listen to a lot of different music and stuff growing up. Used to download a lot of music and stuff when they had LimeWire and all that. And yeah. so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, try, I tried out for the drum line, and it was three of us females because there was no females. And I, I'm, from, I'm originally from Virginia. So okay. I went to George, George Washington High School. Shout out to the Eagles. And, <laughs> okay, yeah. um, and I tried out, and uh, it was tough. And I and I tried out for the bass, the bass drum. Mm, okay. And I ended up making the drum line, and I was fourth bass. And um, that the year that I did it, I only did it one year uh, for drum line on, on with the band. But the year that I did it, we were a uh, we were trained. We did the record of old ninety seven. We were trained, so we trained. You know, the the drum kept kept everything going and okay. I mean we won every competition <laughs> uh-huh. we won every drumline competition I believe that you know that we entered and that was pretty cool because we had three females you know yeah um, wow. and so from that you know I just kind of always been in tune went to Hampton and I didn't get in the marching band I didn't play because I didn't want the band to take up too much of my life and my time because I'm yeah. just entering college and I don't know what to expect so yeah. so so um I started Hampton and ended up meeting a group of cool friends and um we used to have parties and I had all this music and at the time we were transitioning from LimeWire, all that stuff to like, you know, the little iPods and oh, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and 
you know, just give you a timeline. So <laughs> I pause and stuff like that. And and I was like, I done loaded all this music, transferred it to my iPod or whatever. I said, y'all, I'm going to be the DJ. You know, I'm a DJ from my iPod like that. Yeah. I knew what songs to play, though. And we <laughs> have fun. Well, a little later, I used to make CDs, too. Burn okay. CDs. Yeah. I, used to, I used to make mixtapes. I got to throw that out there. Okay. So my cousin told me one year, she said, Ashley, you should probably consider being a DJ. And I said, I really would like to be a DJ. I said, she said, maybe you should reach out to, you know, someone or whatever. Maybe they could give you some advice or something. And I said, okay. So at the time at Hampton, there was a DJ there, um, Tay James. Um, I saw him, you know, multiple times. Well, he was the only DJ there, but I saw him a couple of times with female DJ. And I said, well, if he's teaching her, surely he'll teach me. Well, it, it didn't happen that way. Well, now, <laughs> so I just kind of never pursued it, never thought to really take it any further. I end up getting really into the aviation thing because I said, I'm trying to get a, a real career here, you know, and I, you know, I, I can't focus on the music stuff because it's a lot that comes with it. So fast forward, do the air traffic stuff, move to Memphis, get comfortable had the I had the opportunity to go to Atlanta Tower mm -hmm. I turned it down and and I had the opportunity to go to Dubai mm -hmm. um to work over there in their tower um but I really I thought about it I had a conversation with a good friend of mine and he said Ashley if you weren't an air traffic controller what would you be doing yeah. and I said I'd be a DJ and he <laughs> said well could you do both and I said, well, I guess I could, you know. And so I started, you know, really thinking. And then I went and got a board and an actual DJ, little small board, and start practicing and teaching myself and just really focusing in on it. It took me about a year or so to really kind of learn. And I was like, well, what's going to be my DJ name? And and before I used to be DJ such and such because <laughs> I couldn't think of nothing else. But then I was like, well, I can combine. We talked about it, about how I can combine aviation and air traffic. Yeah. And so I then I was like, Alpha Whiskey, that's going to be my name. Yeah. And so um, DJ Alpha Whiskey started three years ago. I've DJed all around Memphis. Um, I've DJed for Memphis Grizzlies. I've DJed Floyd May Mayweather came here. They had an event. I DJ for that. Oh, wow. I DJ. I have a flight risk. I have somehow I managed to get on the radio. Yeah, wow. okay. <laughs> so I'm on the radio every Thursday. Um, a new radio station here out of Concourse, uh, Con Concourse, um, in Midtown and uh, WYXR ninety one point seven. So every Thursday, we take a flight to a new destination um this past uh thursday um and like i said six to eight we went to canada before okay. went to detroit we've been to havana cuba we've been to brazil we've been to atlanta cal everywhere so i'm building these these travel mixes for people when you know when you want to travel sometimes and you want to get into that vibe you know you're like well what kind of music do I art <laughs> art? So I actually go every week and I research all the artists that are from these different places and the type of music and the culture. And I really kind of just like, okay, this is pretty cool. And then, you know, we take a trip there. And yeah. um, so you know, like with everything is you you take a risk. Sure. And when you fly, you take a you definitely take a risk when you fly. And um, you know, uh they also say, you know, when you you flee the country, <laughs> you're considered a high risk. Right, so right. Sometimes yeah. you need to flee the <laughs> country right. and get away from all of this. You know, I look at it from a from a mental standpoint. You need to flee and just get away and let the music just just take over. You know, and so that's just kind of my little my little thing there. But like I said, I've DJed all over. Um, and so I look forward to continuing to grow and just kind of become more like a, a international type DJ and just kind of spread the message 
of aviation and just trying to get more of us involved and 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 empower a lot of women to know that yeah. it's okay to get in these male dominated fields. Right. It's okay, yeah. you know. And you can do it. You're just as smart, just as talented. And so you just you just gotta, it's nothing to it but to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is a phenomenal message. And uh, especially from where you started too, about uh, your friend that said, why not do both, you know, you know, to, to encouraging you to go ahead and do both. And I, I love that you were able, that you shared that with, with us and the viewers. And I also love your last point, um, especially to the, to the women out there um, that are coming up and, you know, you know, because like you said, the, the field is very, uh, is not as diversified and, um, and I think it just makes it more better for what it is when, if it can become more diversified, all these different uh, ideas and techniques and, you know, all these different things coming from different people, of course, will help to uh, make everything, you know, make everything a lot better of a place if we have, you know, multiple ideas. One, more ideas is better than one idea, I guess, you know. Right. So, so thank you for, for sharing all of that with us. Um, and we're, we're, like I said, we're so happy that you were uh, here to, to share with us. Is there anything that you would like to kind of say to uh, clear us to land, so to speak, you know, as, you know, for the interview? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, you know, like, like I said, with anything in life, you have to take risk. And, um, so my main message to everyone is to, you know, just take the risk. Sometimes it's worth it. You know, we don't all have the answers, um, but with aviation, you know, it's so different and it's, it's fun. You got so many different uh, levels, you know, to it. It's very lucrative. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, don't think about, and, and this is mainly for the young people to think about. You see all these celebrities in these jets. They, they're they taking off. they got luxury jets, all that. Well, what if you could have your own, you know, private jet service that you could offer for, the, for celebs? Or, you know, what if you have, you know, your own, you know, uh, aircraft mechanic shop, you know, that you can work on uh different uh jets and planes and stuff because people gonna stay flying you know right. Right. Uh, flying drones you know mm -hmm. getting getting all of that like there's so many different avionics the equipment that goes into it building designing uh uh aircraft you know if you if you're the uh architect or designer you know there's so many different things in this field and um you know, I just, I think back now that I've gotten older, you know, we kind of, we, I'm kind of mad, you know, we didn't learn more back then about Betsy Coleman yeah. and, and um, you know, a lot of these aviation uh, pioneers, Willa Brown and yes. uh, Cornelius Coffey and yeah. Yeah. I can go down the list, but you know, these were like real heroes that got out here and tried to, to shine a light on aviation but just kind of never, you know, broke through. So here we are now in 2021 and this, you know, but we all just kind of need to work together, I believe, yes. and just um, do the best we can to promote and empower and inspire. And I'm so happy that you had me on here, Bernard. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just want to tell everybody to just keep soaring, keep, grinding and growing and 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 just take the risk even if it's in flight <laughs> yeah the flight risk it's worth it you know right. at times and if it doesn't work out it's okay right yeah, okay. yeah. you learn it's okay <laughs> you get it up and you keep going yeah Absolutely. but if anybody you know i always tell people you know um to how i got into this uh, one of my mentors said ashley when you make it, you know, you always give back and help others. So no matter how high up you get, or how far you go, you, you got there because somebody helped you or gave you some advice or something. So always give back and don't forget where you come from and, and, and just help others as much as you can because you'll, you'll get it back. So, um, 
So yeah, that's that's kind of all of what I what I got for you today. Yeah, well, <laughs> and thank oh, you. if anybody looks, you know, interested in mixes, like I said, DJ Alpha Whiskey, social media, Facebook, you know, all that. And um, anybody has questions or anything, feel free to you know hit me up and and I'll respond and try to help. You know, I got a young guy the other day. He was like, I want to be a pilot. I was like, Well, meet me at the airport. That's why we went last week. I'm like, okay. You want to be a pilot? And he was excited. And he 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 really wants to be a pilot. So so yeah, I'm serious. If somebody wants it, I will help somebody. You know, as much as I can. Yep. Thank you. Well, thank you. Cause that was, that was exactly what I was just going to ask you if, if we can put all your stuff on there, if they, you know, they, if they want to contact you, talk to you about being air traffic controller, um, Hampton, uh, the Eagles back in Virginia, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. if they need a DJ, you know, whatever yeah, it might yeah. be. Yeah. I'm in the process of, of, of rebranding some things and redoing my website, but uh, for the future, I hope to have as much aviation information on my website for people, um, music and aviation information. So, you know, it'll make it easy. Be like, oh, what's up, what's up, well, whiskey? Oh, she got this aviation stuff, you know, information, you know, just so people is there, they have access to it, you know? Yeah. So, so yeah, be looking forward to that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll put all that stuff too on the, on, on the link for this interview. And uh, on behalf of uh, 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 Careers in Aviation, brought to you by Adorn Before a Flight, thank you so much, Ashley Wimbush. Thank you. EJ Alpha Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Absolutely.